In this video, I am going to be installing this Need for Speed, as it's called, uh, graphic theme onto this Primal RC Quicksilver Dragster. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So, as you can see, I've got my print uh, draped here from my machine because I don't have a lot of table space in here. This is a pretty easy install, even though it's long. Um, I'll go over how to get this installed. You can do it yourself on your own machine. There's lots of options and different graphic themes, packages and add-ons you can do. Like this one has the metallic flake add-on. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to all that stuff. And uh, I guess let's get going here. So the first thing I did was I got myself a new Lexan body and I painted it black on the underside. Like the rest of my videos I've done, um, I'll explain why black, why black is so important. Uh, Black is important because there are going to be gaps in between each piece of the graphic and I want those gaps to look like uh, shadows when they're done. Uh, you don't have to paint your body black, I'm just recommending it for the best look. Uh, a couple more things I want to go over. I got some isopropyl alcohol, I have some soaked up water with dish detergent. The details of these things are in the included instruction sheet. I've got a felt tip squeegee. I've got an X-Acto knife and I've got a clean cloth that I'm going to use. So the first thing I want to do is I want to just uh, make sure the body is clean and sterile. So I'm going to spray my isopropyl alcohol or dump it on my rag, whichever kind you have, and just go over the body. Um, I'm assuming that you're probably installing this on a new body, so you shouldn't really have anything on it other than your hand oils. So you just want to get that stuff all off of there. Start yourself with a clean slate. Okay. Now on this particular install, because it is so long, I didn't want to cut out each individual hole here um, for the mounts. Uh, and the reason for that is because when these things are wound up, they tend to contract or expand in the mail. And with how long this is and how precise those holes are, I'd rather you cut them once they're installed. That way there's no shifting or, you know, misplaced holes around the, the eyelets there. Uh, I'll show you how to do that as well. Really, this thing is only four pieces, maybe three if you don't want to put the windshield on. I'm not going to put the windshield graphic on here um, because I actually left it clear. Um, I am going to sell this body and wrap. Uh, put the link uh, for that down below as well. I've only got one, so if you don't feel like doing the labor yourself, uh, this is one shot to have a body shipped to you that's already got the graphics installed. Okay? So, there is a diagram on here, and this tells you which pieces I want you to do first, okay? And it looks like we need to do the black pieces first, and that is the left and right side. The reason I want you to do that is because I want you to center these and get them on, and then this top piece you can center left or right to get an even gap all the way down. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my camera realigned here and get started and we'll get this one side on. Okay, I've got my camera realigned. What I want to do is take my soapy water and spray everything down. You can see the consistency of the soap. I've got some suds going on here. I would say I've got, in, in past videos, I have said that you want to put four or five drops of dish detergent to, you know, a quart of, of uh, water. I've been doing a lot more soap these days. It seems to work a little bit better, but the litmus test for that is if you're squeegeeing on the graphics and it's crackling on you and you're getting air, air trapped in there, you need to add more soap, okay? So I'll be right with you. I'm going to pull the piece off the sheet that I need and then we'll be back in frame and we'll get started. Okay, I have pulled the piece off, placed it on the table here. The first thing I want to do is, that is the wrong product. I just sprayed some isopropyl alcohol in there. That won't hurt nothing. Um, we can just spray it over with the soapy water. That is not the first time I've done that by accident on film. Okay. As you can see, this lines up really well. Just like that. The front here will wrap around. And I'm just going to slide this into place. And then I'm going to check my camera, make sure I'm in frame for you guys. Looks like I am. Okay, I'm going to get down here, see what's doing. I'm just going to run my finger down here and loosen that up a little bit because I want to get that aligned at the back. I'm leaving myself about a sixteenth on the back there. I'm letting it sit at the bottom. Okay. 
Okay. And because this has been sitting in the shop for a while, for about four days, it's contracted a little bit. As you can see, I'm about oh, an eighth heavy short there. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. Forgot to get one tool out here that I need, and that is a heat gun. This will help us stretch this a little bit from its contracted state, being cool in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this fixed back here. I'm going to warm it up. And I'm going to pick a point. I'm going to start right there where his tongue is and put my hand behind it and just pull back and the water will come shooting out, okay? So now I've got to get this cheated up up here. As you can see it's a little short there, right there. So in order to do that, I'm going to pull it back like this. I'm going to spray it down again while I've got the chance. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up, not just in one spot here, but for maybe a foot and a half, just like that. I'm going to keep it taut and I'm just going to give it a little tug like this. And as you can see, I got that uh, 3 16 back there. I'm going to keep my hand on there because as it cools, it wants to contract and pull back. And I'm just going to get some of that water out of there like that to help me hold it in place. Now it's held in place. I'm going to come back with the heat. <clears throat> Keep it soft with the heat so it doesn't pull back on you. Just like that. And now I'm just going to run my squeegee right down like that. And like this. It's that simple. Okay. That's all on. It will need to bake in the sun after we're done, and I'll explain that. Now we can get this piece. I'm just gonna lift this up a little bit here, and I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a tug. I got another 16th out of it there. And we're gonna wrap this around, just like this. Get my knife before it falls off the table. Let's heat this up. going to use my thumb and I'm going to go right around while it's still warm and down just like that okay I'm going to do the other side now I'm going to put it in high speed it's the same exact process in reverse you may or may not need to do the stretch on this side it just depends on where they cut these I don't think these cutouts are consistent I'm sure that they're done by hand and may shift a little bit so uh you may not need to stretch it. You may need to stretch it. Depends on your body. Okay, I've gotten this side done as well as this side. And the next step now is to get this top piece on. And then we'll tighten up some of the uh, graphics here once we get everything aligned. So I just need to spray it down like I did before and I'll pull that piece off. Just like so. I'll lay it down there like that. Spray it and plop it on there. And we're looking pretty good here. Got to make sure we line up the artwork to the best of our ability here. And honestly, it's perfect. Uh, and by perfect, I will show you. You can see the lines here in the um, monster right there, right there, and right there. And all three of those line up. And as long as those line up, uh, you will be set up the uh, length of this. Now the trick to this is you need to lift it up and get it reset so that you're centered 
and that when you fold this down and over on each side, you've got a little gap left over, okay? And it's important to check it all the way up before you squeegee it down. You don't want any overlap there. This stuff is a little bit too thick to be overlapped. I can see that I'm good to here. And instead of trying to muscle all of it at one time and lift it up, I'm just gonna set it down here and then I'm gonna work from here down if I have to. So here's the heat. Be careful with uh, these spots up here where it's real narrow and pointed at the top. Right down the spine here, I'm gonna go like this to get it started. You can see the water coming out probably, okay? And then I'm gonna go like that. There is water coming out, which means the graphic is making contact once the water is pushed out. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to do the lift here and essentially, Center it the best I can. Let's see if I can get a better angle on this here. There we go. Kind of got it. A little bit hard. I think what I'll do is have you guys focus in on just one side here. And imagine that it looks the same on the other. See how that's stuck there on me? I'm just going to add a little bit more juice there. Give me some more time. I'm just using my hands to sort of feel here where the center is, and it needs to go this way a little bit. That looks pretty good. So I think what I'm gonna do is hold it here while I heat it up, make it soft. And I'm gonna do another third of it down to my, where my hand is, and then I'll finish off the very front to make sure it's exact. Just like this, just like that. That looks great. I'm gonna take my towel and I'm just gonna go like this and try and soak up some of the water that's coming out and, and trapped in the groove here. Because what happens is when, it's, it, when you're pushing it down, sometimes the water wants to get back up in there on its own. That looks good. Okay. And that looks fantastic. I'm, I'm nice and centered there. I'm gonna hold it with my finger and then just finish this off. I'm actually gonna use my rag to finish this off. I'm just gonna go like this while it's still warm and the water is gonna push out. There we go. Got a little ripple there. We'll lift this up and get that out of there. If you get a little crease in the graphic, you can just lift it up heat it up and it'll disappear for you. I think I had a little bit too much friction with that rag once I heated it up. Maybe the squeegee was the better option. Okay. At this point, it's basically on there. And all we need to do is just come back, especially on these sides, where the graphic has split the difference on the radius there, and sort of just do a roll down. Now, when you do this roll down, be careful not to get, if, if, this is, if this bottom piece here is not yet adhered, you could get some fuzzies in there. So just be careful not to get any fuzzies in there. I'm just doing a nice slow roll down along the way. Nothing too technical. And it's gonna take a couple tries. So as you push it down, it sometimes will come back up. You have to keep warming it if that's the case and just keep working it. Because what's happening, is the water, there's just a little bit of water trapped on that edge. And every time you push it down, it pushes the water out a little bit more, but some of it likes to squeak back in there. And so you just have to stay patient and you just have to keep pushing it down. Same with this side. There's gonna be some water on this piece here and you can just use your rag and go up through like so. This side looks really good. I'm happy with it. Let's flip to this side. And we'll do the same thing. We'll warm it up.
start back here and we'll just kind of do that roll down. Oop, got, got exactly what I told you guys not to do there. I got a little fuzzy there, but I got lucky because it came out. Sort of a press roll down. Mixed with a push like this. And you just keep going back and forth. I'm going to speed up the film here while I button this up and then we'll reconnect at the end. Okay, I've gone ahead and buttoned this up. I had a few water pockets in here that I, I re-squeegeed out, as you can see, in the high-speed portion of the video. And so now, I've got a little overlap here, and what I wanna do is I just wanna trim that up, find my best way to do this here, and I'm just gonna put my thumb down here, take my blade at a very low angle like this. This is a high angle, this is a low angle, and I'm gonna run it back like so, and then I'll just pluck that little piece out. If you don't get it all in the first shot, that's fine. Just come back in the same groove and finish it off there. Looks like I need to trim the other side just a little bit. There we go. And there should be a little sliver. That's it, okay? So here we are, okay? This is done and what I wanted to show you was you could, the holes for your, your mounts here. Do not mount this right after you get done uh, installing. I want you to set it out in the sun for six to eight hours and let it get hot and bake. After that, come back, check all your edges, You know, do a little peel test, make sure everything's down. If it's not, use the heat gun, warm it up, push it down. On the holes, you can poke a little, uh, I'm not gonna actually do it because I'm gonna sell this and I, I wanna let the client do it if they, if they need to or not need to. You can come through the back and just mark it with a poke a little hole through there. Once you do that, come back and just put a star in there, like a start with a cross and then do a star. And then you can take your knife and just get it out of there. When you go to put the screws in, be very careful, especially if it's only been installed for a couple days, torquing it tight as the, as the screw head hits the vinyl and torques tight, it can twist the vinyl. I like to take a little dab of Vaseline and just put a little dab of Vaseline on the back side of the screw head so that when I do go to torque it in, still be careful, but it'll reduce that friction for you. There is one more piece on the sheet uh, to put on and it's the windshield graphic that goes here. That's quite simple. I'm not gonna put it on, like I said, because I wanna leave this clear for the customer, whoever buys this. Uh, just line it up in the center and it will curl itself around. You'll leave your 1 16th to 1 8th inch gap all the way around, and that's all there is to it. Okay, uh, this Quicksilver body for this dragster is complete. This was a fun, quick little project. Uh, like I said, there is a windshield graphic here that's perfectly cut to fit this. I'm not gonna put that on because I'm gonna sell it like this and let the, the customer decide what they want to do. Uh, but this is the final product. I think it looks fantastic. The artwork is perfectly aligned. The, I think I've gonna have about at least a dozen different themes on there and each theme has countless customization options. Um, this one has the metallic flake finish added to it. You can kind of see it sparkling. But uh, I think you would be one of a kind. Uh, if you're into this uh, drag race stuff, I don't think anybody's going to compete with something like this. And look how quickly I did it. I think it was 15 minutes. Uh, if you wanted an airbrush uh, art on this, you probably need to wait for months, weeks, I don't know. And uh, even then, not to take away from the talents and abilities of those people, because it is outstanding. 
Um, but if you're in a hurry and you want the biggest bang for your buck, I think this is the way to go. So without uh, any more to be said, you can get this on the website and I will put the links below. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.